Yeah. No, hold on. I don't want to to tell me. I got to sing Killing Time because you, you're, you're, my, you're my legend. You're my guest on here today. I'm so honored to have you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Chastity Buckley. I'm the host of Midnight R&B Edition. Her mind's Midnight Love Me T. Well, I give all my flowers to all my R&B artists, singers, songwriters, and producers. But this lady right here, I have to bow down to her because this lady right here is the legend of all legends. I mean, this lady is an Oscar nominated. Yep, Oscar nominated. Yes, I have to say that. Honored to have you. But now that she's also a singer, a songwriter, a composer, an author as well of 100 every, oh, how was it, uh, what's the title of the Arthur book? 100 Things, 100 things Every Black Girl Should Know. For Girls, 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 Girls Temple. Uh, Honored to have this lady on the platform, but not even that. You have really, really set a mark in the industry. But not even that, congratulations. This is the 30th anniversary of your legacy, honey, because right. Gangsta Lean is 30 years today. I mean, this year coming up. like what? Our, Yes, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Gangsta Lean in October. I'm just honored to have you. Yeah. But this lady is a true R&B legend, the one, the only, Miss Tara Stinson. Thank you so much. <laughs> Look, thank you. And we and look, today we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Destiny's Child Self-Time Daddy. Um, how do you feel like it's 25 years today? It does not feel like 25 years. It's just like, oh my God. I mean, when you think about it and you look at their legacy individually yeah. and collectively, it's like, okay, yeah, well, yeah. I guess so. But, you know, and life, you know, it just keeps ticking and moving mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel that way. But, you know, I'm I, 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 obviously just like honored and I can't believe that it's been 25 years. It's just, I'm happy to have been a part of the beginning of their legacy. Yes. And you know what? It's, it's like I said, I told you earlier the time, we we're going to talk about it on the show, but like for you to pave the way for not even just girl groups, but just hip hop artists. And people don't talk about how you, what you've done in this legacy in the music industry. And that's why I wanted to honor and give you your flowers because mm -hmm. for people like you to even say, and like I said, I'm a huge DC fan. I've been a DC fan since I was nine. So child, like, mm -hmm. Literally a nine-year-old child myself really loved Destiny Child for what they did, you know, coming from Houston, Texas, but from you, coming from where you come from, I just respect your legacy and what you've done. You know what I'm saying? So yes. thank you so much. Me. Congratulations on 30 years because your 30th, your 30th year technically is this year, 30 years in the music industry, right? Against the lane. We're going to talk about that a little later. Wow. On. Yeah. I, I, I even, I've never even heard it put that way. Thank you. 30 years. Look, honey, like when I can battle the people that have been in the game for three decades, I got nothing but respect for you. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So before we do get started, I want to ask you, how have you been uh, dealing since the pandemic has happened? Like, how have you been and what have you done? Like, how have you done to stay like very, you know, sane in this crazy pandemic down there? How has it changed your life in so many ways? You know, um, I mean, well, I had COVID three times. And so I mean, it's like, it just likes me. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Just here recently, I, um, I, like whenever my mom says, whenever you go into a large crowd, make sure you're protected because I guess like certain people and my mom, on the other hand, has never gotten it. So, oh, like, oh, yeah. God. So, um, but the pandemic itself. So, so the cold COVID the first time I, I just have to say, I want to tell people the numbers are still high, yeah. you know, it's still 500 people a day. It's still, <laughs> it's still, still protect yourself. My friends, my best friend's father was just in the hospital with it, you know, oh, so you protect yourself. Um, yeah. but how it, how it, um, affected me personally. Um, it was actually, a from a career perspective not so bad <laughs> because you know you're you're sitting there people are animation was a really big thing because right. um animation takes a while and yeah. so I, I worked on central park and um it's a apple uh, uh, cartoon um animated show mm -hmm. so i was able to work on central park um i started to work on moon girl um hmm. which came last week um on marvel disney um, yeah, so Raphael Sadiq and I wrote the theme song. Come on, and we wrote like you know several songs for the in the for the body of the series, and he mm -hmm. he he wrote and produced the whole thing. It's just incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that was the the beginning of the pandemic. As mm -hmm. it progressed, you know, and we start to get out more, and yeah. that was pretty much us just working remotely. You know, I right. didn't see him. I worked a lot with Darian Dorsey. We mm -hmm. worked. We worked you know, either like here together in my apartment or it would just be, you know, you, we work with people on zoom. Yeah. And you have phone conversations again. Wow. And my girlfriend, yeah. And my girlfriends and I were zooming and making cocktails and sharing recipes. And uh, we had this thing called vitamin B20 where we were just like sharing this daily vitamin with the, you know, whomever would tune in on, on social media. So it right. was so bad. It mm -hmm. was, there was a lot of things that I think sometimes 
in life, God will sit you down. Amen. <laughs> and I felt like God was sitting us down. Like yeah. we have, we had like these crazy political, this crazy political environment that we were in and all these different things. And we just had to, we needed to take a step back. So right. it wasn't, it wasn't the worst thing, but having it is not so cool. Mm, yeah. yeah, but I'm, I'm blessed to even like still see you here because I've never heard you nobody having it three times. Mm. So that's a blessing in his own right, Miss Tar, for you to still be talking to me and standing here because, you know, COVID has taken so many people out. Mm -hmm. But now that the, 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 the okay. blessing of it at the end of the day is God protecting you. You know, the Amen. Wall, you know yes. Amen. Girl, you got to still write these, these write these amazing songs that you've been doing yes. for the past 30 years. <laughs> Honey, you can't just leave us in this earth. Girl, yes. my heart be torn. Girl, you yes, I keep saying that. That's crazy. I'm like, okay, uh, Gangsta Lane was 30 years ago. Yeah. 25. That's. <laughs> well, you got more to be said, but we're going to talk about that later on in the show. But we need to get to know you and who you are as a person because you yes, made my yes, platform. Yes, yes. But not even just that. I want people to get to know who you are and where you come from. So I know you were born in Birmingham, Alabama. Yes, and yes. also, you were raised in East Oakland. I got to make that specific because, baby, y'all, you know, older folks. Child, look, I don't know nobody counting these people. Yeah. So y'all making sure. East Oakland. <laughs> East Oakland, uh, California. But I know how was it like, you know, changing from the South to the West Coast? But not even that. How was it like, you know, growing up listening to army music? Like, who were some of your inspirations by the time you left the South to go to the West Coast? Um, you know, oddly enough, I was raised uh, super religious. Mm. So I couldn't, I couldn't listen to when I was when I was in Oakland. I was so I moved to Oakland when I was three years old. Oh, um, wow. and and but I but I frequented Alabama every holiday every oh. summer every if it was five days I was they sh I was in Alabama because <laughs> you know it was a crack epidemic was starting and, oh, wow. and it wasn't so much in Birmingham where where or, or maybe we just had this protection of like lots of family my, both of my parents have well my mom has like 11 siblings and my dad has nine oh, wow. so it was a serious community that we didn't have so much in Oakland Mm -hmm. Um, so in Oakland, I was listening to the Clark sisters. I was listening to the Winans. I ran into Carbon Winans the other day. I just could have, it was like planning out, like seeing my oh, direction for me, you know? <laughs> um, so like the Winans, uh, commissioned, um, uh, Sandy Patty and like different, you know, praise, praise music. Yeah. Um, but, um, then when I go to Birmingham, they were listening to music and I'm like, you know, what is this? Like to where my cousin, Charlie, she told me that the song Bat, um, Burn Rubber On Me, Charlie, was about her. And I believe that's, that's how gullible I was. I didn't know nothing. <laughs> I didn't know nothing. I was just like, um, what, you know, I would sneak and watch MTV. Mm. And so I'm like, oh my God, you know, like I um, fell in love with Prince. I felt, well, Michael Jackson was my first love. And then I fell in love with Prince. And then so I was I was a, a big reader and always reading liner notes. So I, whenever we would go to someone's house who had secular records, yeah. I would plop on the floor and read every word. And I was internalizing those lyrics. That's what I was what I was doing, and I didn't realize it. Mm, that's amazing. I know you said Prince is like one of your like your idols because how much how much you love him and mm -hmm. everything he's done. And I know for you, I, you probably were inspired by writing lyrics because I know you said you were very young. And I think one of your family members had found a book or something of you, or like. What happened? Like, how did that find about? Like, did they find out that you were invested in writing, or what was it about the creative writing process for you that inspired you to write music? Well, so that was my cousin Patria, and she she's like found a, my I had like a composition notebook that my mom bought for me. She knew early on that I was a creative soul. You know, she's oh like, what? like, what are you talking about? Like the things I would say. She was like, can you just start writing those down? So yeah. my mom bought me the book, mm -hmm. and my cousin found it. And she goes, uh, did you write this? And I'm like, oh, yes, but because there weren't gospel words, you know, I'm up here exploring. I'm eight years old. I'm seeing yeah. Rick James when I, you know, when I go to Birmingham and I'm like, Rick James is sexy. <laughs> and I wrote that down and I wrote all these poems. And and, and how crazy is that, that that's who I thought was sexy? And, <laughs> um, and, wrote, <laughs> and wrote Everybody all, did. <laughs> right. And so, um, and he was stylish. And I, and I was like, you yeah. know, you're building your identity and you just don't even know it. Yeah. Um, and so my cousin, she's like, oh, my God, I got to show this to my dad. And I'm like, please don't, because he's our pastor, you know. <laughs> and But he was also a musician, a, accomplished songwriter and just like a, a, an amazing inspiration in my life. And so when she took it to him, I was scared. I was like, OK, it's over. I'm going to get taken up for prayer. I'm going to be called up on Sunday to the altar. Right. And um, he was just like, 
they called me baby girl. He was like, baby girl, you wrote this? And I'm like, yes. And he was like, this is incredible. Wow. And so he gave me a, um, a, a recorder um, where you, the kind you would have to press the record and play button. Mm -hmm. He said, put this beside your bed. Um, God is going to wake you up with songs. And remember, you got to write for the Lord. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um, and so th at that time, I think, is when I my poems, because he told me that the melodies are the sounds that words make in music. And I, and I just never forgot that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so now I can go like love instead of just like love, you know, whatever it is, I'm going to, I'm going to, I can put the sound to these words. And I started to do it at that time. And I was right. eight years old. That's amazing. I think that's the gift. And I'm so proud that your family really supported you with that. Cause I know what a lot of people, especially in, you know, the church, they're very, very, very hardcore when it comes down to just exploring that type of music, but not even that. They feel like, you know, you go further, you're going to go to the dark side. I mean, it's not the dark side. At the end of the day, y'all, it's about expressing your feelings and learning from, you know, life. Because life, you go through ups and downs and just yep. understanding about things. And I think you writing it down just in general from an eight-year-old perspective, girl, that's a gift. A gift from God that nobody mm -hmm. can take away. You. you know what I'm saying? Thank so you. I feel like, you know, that's truly amazing. And I think you going back home, having that home out. Because I'm from the South. I'm from Louisiana, too. So, yeah. so I, I still the roots like we're gonna always have a family a bond it's very different from the west coast where it's kind of very different city life you know mm -hmm. so in the midst of that like as you got older and stuff you know go back and forth to california how did you get into the process of the writing and not even that i know you say gasoline was your first song that you wrote like was it before you got with your group in mind or how did that come about because i know your album with that with the group in 94 came out so how did that all come about with you writing and get into the song placement well, Gangsling wasn't the first song I wrote. It was just the first song that came out. Came out. And it was, you know, and I, I and I feel like safe in talking about this now, but mm -hmm. it was horrible. Um, oh, wow. because, yeah, because I had to sue for my credit. Oh, see, this yeah. is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So oh, you know, I know. I, I was, yeah, I was in, um, I was in New York. I was working on the Image album, and um, or or, or uh, some something that I was doing with Image, yes. and um. And we spent a lot of time, we even moved there as a group. But mm -hmm. um, the guy I was dating at the time, he was like, oh, we heard the song on the radio. I was like, oh my God, I wrote this song. And he's like, oh, and he read the, you know, the people involved. And he says, oh, you, you know, you better be careful. I wonder if you got your credit. And I didn't, you know? And so I'm, I'm at that age, 20 years old, I think I was, you know, getting a lawyer and having to sue Mm -hmm. um, having to have these big conversations with people on TV that were not, uh, didn't make me feel safe. Mm. And, um, and then, um, and to this day, I have to like battle people like, yeah, yeah, I did write that song. You know, I, I mean, wow. I, I, people don't understand when you say I co-wrote a song. I wrote, if you write the music and I write the lyric, we have co-written the song. Hey, you hey. write the music, I write the lyric. That doesn't mean, in this case, we did, um, like, one of, the, one of the guys did change some lyrics in the song, but this is just a retelling of what I saw in my neighborhood in East Oakland, California. Right. These guys, um, I, I believe that one was from Sacramento, or maybe a couple of them were. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was a hard time, you know, yeah. to, to have that song go... I was just like recently learned learned how successful the song was because mm. I was so removed from it. Yeah. I was so like, oh, hurt by it, you know. Yeah. So I just like posted on my stories recently, like, wow, this song was number one for six weeks in the R and B charts mm. and was like top ten um, on the Hot 100. Yeah. And I didn't even know that then. And and you know what? The purity and the beauty of that is that I didn't even care then. What? No, I didn't even care. Man, why me look? <laughs> I, I didn't care. Wait, I just wanted to write my next. Song. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to write my next song. Wow, but look, I, I, that's why I have to make sure you get your respect for that because at the end of the day, is it's always in this industry. We always talk about how people just get kind of swiped or just get messed over because mm -hmm. of the sharks in the industry don't want to give people their respect and their credit. But not even that, give them the right to do what they got to do to be. You know, bigger than what they are in the industry, but not even just that. So, you wrote a hit, a classic yeah. that people still play to this day. Yeah, it's memorable. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. when you say, I'm happy you're telling your story on that perspective to help young creatives to make sure they know the business before they get involved in any type. Right. Of you know what I'm saying? Sheets. So make sure when you leave that studio that you have an agreement on who wrote what, that part, <laughs> and what you're sharing. Because these days, 
there's like uh, there's like celebrity taxes that come with certain songs, you know, like they, they, oh, I'm going to I'm just going to take 50 percent or I'm just, you know, so yeah. you have to know what you're willing to give up, you know, in certain situations. Mm -mm, no, nah, see, that, you know, you're going to get your credit and credit to do, honey. Oh, yeah. I did that. Out. <laughs> I did it out. Like, you did, mm -hmm. you did that. So, mm -hmm. was that your, like your first break being with your, uh, being with the group writing, or was it, well, like you said, that wasn't your first song, like your first hit. So, how was it like your first break in the music industry? Was it around that time in the 90s, early 90s? Or yeah, so um, around, so Image, we were, um, we were signed to Black Sheep, um, mm -hmm. uh, th to mm -hmm. their production company. Um, it was like a beautiful experience to, for, it was kind of like college for me. Cause when, when my friends were graduating college I mean graduating high school, I'm like, oh my God, like I can't go to college. I can't afford to go here. You know, all my friends were like, had parents that were well off. I was going to, going, taking the bus to the school that right. was out in the district that everyone was well off. And my mom and I, it was just her, she and I, and she yeah. was a hairstylist and a dreamer just like me and a creative. So I'm like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? And um, and I decided, OK, because at first I wanted to be a journalist. I've been going to um, journalism and radio camps in the summertime and wow. um, just and my father wanted me to be a journalist really badly. A, a TV, he wanted me to be a commentator, like to be on the news, like Dan Rather and like these people. Oh, and I, I and I, I learned every year, like how much your voice is taken from you in those in those rooms and that you're not really telling your story. Yeah. And so I, I said, you know what? I think I am going to be a songwriter because I kind of, for whatever reason, probably um, to think about it in retrospect, I think maybe I fought the idea of being a songwriter because I thought I was going to go to hell. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> look, look, but I look, love that you're big for yourself because look what happened now. Right. And okay. I know, and I know, and I, there, you know, I know that fear is not of God and that, and that fear Man. tactic was not, you know, is was not what, uh, how do I even put it? That fear tactic worked against me only, but for so long, because mm -hmm. once I realized that fear really and truly is not of God and that God is love and that God really loves the world and not, not pit hand picking like you more and you more like he right. loves us all. And that gave me freedom. And I knew like, Oh, you know what? I can be a songwriter. So that's when I just leaped into it. I, we met Drez um, at this festival, this thing called the Festival at the Lake in Oakland. Mm. Long story short, Braylee Evans. I don't know if you know she is. Yes, I do the actress Braylee Evans. Yeah, yes, I do. She's so talented. Oh. Yes, we were in a group together. She's like, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so Braylee and I were at this festival, and he, and he goes like, "Will you guys be in our music video?" And we're like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then he goes, um. What, what do you do though? Like, what do you do? And then Bradley's like, we sing. Bradley has this big personality. I'm like, uh, please don't tell me to sing. But next thing you know, we're singing for him right there at the lake. Um, within months, we are in New York recording our album. What? And thanks, wow. thanks, thanks to him, you know. Um, so during that time, they uh, long story short, um, our group disbanded, and Bradley wanted to add another person. She went to Matthew knows it. She was like, let's add another person. <laughs> And I'm like, no, I don't, you know, I really like the process of being here, like behind the board. Like I, I don't, I, when we would perform, I hated it, you know? So I was like, let's just, you know, want, you, you, you can go and be a solo act. I will support you in every, you know, whatever. And I'm, she pivoted to acting, which was the greatest thing. And she's still mm -hmm. saying, um, but um, yeah, so I, I decided to just, go for broke. I, I had to go back home, tail between my legs, back in my bedroom, back with the composition notebook, no computers then. And, um, well, we didn't have one. And, <laughs> um, and so then I, I was dealing with the legalities with, uh, with, uh, gangsta Lee. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I just started to get other, you know, like opportunities I did, um, uh, Lisa Stansfield. Um, yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah. And so I did. When I did, I'm leaving. It was number one on the dance chart. Yes, it was. And no, so I, and no, you I don't really realize practice. the magnitude of this until now. Like when they were just saying, "Oh, Beyonce is the first person to be black woman to be number one on the dance charts." I was too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but I, but I was, but I, I wasn't first. You know, there's been many a, a black writers, but I, you know, I shared in that that victory with Lisa. Amen. Um, and she was number one with that song. And then I wrote, um, uh, I, I want to say around that time is um, 
the Deborah Cox song, you know. So I just started. It's over there. Yeah, it's over there. You know, I'm going to drop them the flag. You know, I'm going to do that for you. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's over now, and like I start getting all these little cuts, um, not little cuts, but getting mm -hmm. these cuts, and then um, and honestly, it just takes time as a writer. You know, it's not like you're um, I'm in front of the camera all the time. Yeah. Like it's not, you know, it's not like uh, you can see it's it's quantified by what people can see. It's your own personal goals that you set for yourself. And I'm just happy. I'm even to this day when I get a song in a movie, a song on a TV show. I'm just thankful, you yeah. know? And so even then, so that's why I can't tell you. I remember I was doing like songs after that and I did Khalees and I did. Yeah, um, I was making 20 years, Glow. Oh my God, girl, you got crazy. some songs. Yes, 20th anniversary in December, girl, you know I know. Child, you know these numbers. <laughs> like you have a lot of songs that albums are making, you know, anniversaries, like 25th anniversary yeah. of Denver Cox and Wish. Like these albums are really, really finna be times. And like I said, we did a battle, it's over now. We did that with my girl, um, Kel. We did Deborah Cox versus to me, and we did "Is Over Now" versus another song. Oh, we played your song, and she went crazy over that. So it was like oh, wow. it was just a fun experience. But now, now I love that just dropping these gems of your hits because even though I knew your hits, but for you to you know talk about, I think the how we say this the adversity that you had went through, but not even that you still kept going regardless of what everybody mm -hmm. thought because of what you had went through with Yankee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I love that, especially with black women. You know. We take so much in, but not even that. You were persevering through everything you went through, and I respect that. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, no problem. You want to drop some more gems, honey? Because we, <laughs> we didn't get to your other stuff yet. Look. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because I because it's like, really, I remember I did, I would always touch in film, like, because I wanted to do, I, I, I've always wanted to write for film and TV, because I'm, I'm a person who, like I said, I was listening to Clock Sisters and the Wine Ends, but then I would watch MTV, I'm watching... Um, uh, in love with Joni Mitchell, and then I loved yeah. Minnie Whipperton. Then I had like, you know, the Prince and all the things that comes with him being inspired by him. And so I, um, I wanted to write more genres. I wanted to be able to to stretch and be able to write all to to speak for all the parts inside of me, the voices inside of me, to be able to speak. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And so um, I would try my best to like, oh, I want to do it. And I would always tell Raphael like. We gotta do film. We gotta do film, and um, we did like um, "Take Me Home." I think it was for, uh, ooh, it was a barber shop or the beauty shop soundtrack. Mm. It, and it was like this really cool, like little dance song. And then we did Terry Dexter for one of those oh, "Delivers from Eva." And so we were tapping in, trying because he had already had legacy with um, some of the songs that he did. Exactly, we are right. Yeah, but the peaches and herb as for an. Uh, no, that's y'all. That's y'all. <laughs> have together, but it's oh, amazing. But, but like yeah. a brother, but um, but he um, he was like you know he, but he was so focused on like he was doing Insta Vintage, which is one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, he was doing Insta Vintage around you know uh, that time, like yeah. prepping for that and doing those things. So he was less focused on 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 film and TV. But yeah. I was always asking him like, oh, can we please do film and TV? You know, right. Um, but we were, you know, we were like working with Eric and Fire. We did um, Tell Me the Way, mm -hmm. Tell Me the Way, which was like their their comeback song. They were Grammy nominated for it, and um, and I did. We did several songs on that album. There's one wow. called Pass Pass You By that I just I listen to every now and again. Out of love. So yeah, it was just like, but it was a grind, you know, because it was like. Um, to be co completely honest, and there's a you know Tiffany Red. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but mm -hmm. she's oh a, yes, 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 Tiffany. Yes, I know her. Love her. Yeah. songwriter. Yes, yeah, Love and her. she's an avid advocate for um, just talking about like songwriters' rights. Yeah. And a lot of those times, like all these songs I'm mentioning, for the most part, you wait as a songwriter, you wait to get paid when your royalties come. What? Oh so, yeah. And, and, you know, and that's no, that's, it's no mistake. Like things are designed this way. Like we have, you know, there's a lot of um, songwriters are women. You mm -hmm. know, if you just think about it, you know, yeah. songwriters are women, um, producers are men and we wait. And yeah. so I had to make that, that decision. I took some time later, like after like these songs that I mentioned, probably mm -hmm. this was later. So this was like around 2009. Cause I, I went to um, work with Dr. Dre for a stretch of time. And a lot of those records didn't come out. Mm. And then I um and then 2009 I just said you know what I quit <laughs> I quit 
And so I um, became a personal assistant. And, um, yeah. and at that time, I, like when I worked with Dre, I, um, Paris Hilton came to him and said, hey, can you um, do a song for me? And he's like, absolutely not. But <laughs> I, um, he said, but I know someone who can. Right. So he connected me with Paris. And, um, and it was, it was, and we, we, we became friendly. Aww. And so when she, when I went through that time in that period of space in my life where I was like, you know what, I am having, having this big, like personal change in my life. And I, I don't know if music is for me, but maybe I'm going to go on the other side and be an A&R. Mm -hmm. um, and so I talked to her and she's just like, you know what, I, I don't have an A&R job for you, but I, you can be my personal assistant. Mm -hmm. And it was life saving for me because um, I was able to to stand on my own too personally, yeah. and I became her personal assistant, which then gave me um, the uh, I don't even I guess kind of like the the freedom to try other things, and I yeah. and also just kind of like just getting like mixing fear, like like I was fighting it, like I was in a video game, just like okay, I'm gonna do this, I want to do this, I'm gonna do this. So at the round the same, uh, uh, maybe a, a year into my tenure with Paris, Matthew, Beyonce's dad, reached out to me. Um, I was really close to them, like during the, the Destiny's Child process. Um, my ex was like, was someone who was really um, important to them and their developmental process, as well yeah. as my good friend Shakir, who signed the, um, Beyonce to her first um, writing, pu her publishing gig. Mm. And so uh, Matthew reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be doing Sunday's Best and I think you have the ears to be an A&R. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? You know, because you just, you, you add, but then you think about it. When I thought about it, I'm like, oh, this, I know gospel like the back of my hand. I was raised in it. I know what sounds good. Mm -hmm. I know. And so I, um, I, my first record that I a and r was Leandra Johnson and she won a Grammy mm -hmm. and uh, and every artist that we worked on for that, um, for, for the Sunday Best uh, Music World brand was number one. Um, wow. Amber Bullock, yeah, Amber Bullock, um, Elder Goldwire, um, Joshua. There was like all these records and it was just getting me. Um, and at the same time, so I'm literally like, uh, I finally um, I, I work with Paris. I, I end up quitting and like saying, okay, I'm going to put my feet back in music again working for Puff f for a very short time for um, as a personal assistant as well, but never Raphael and I never stopping. Like, he's like, you better, you know, keep your chops up. So I would come over right. to a studio at nighttime or when he's on tour and just still write. And yeah. um, eventually uh, we just got back to the, a place where I was about to like make a big turn, left turn in my life that, cause the thing is, uh, especially nowadays, <clears throat> right? A lot of people do things for money. A lot of mm. people say, you know, you know, if you gave me this, I would do this. And then you get over there and you're miserable because as much as I love Paris and she's a good person and all that, I was like, oh, my God, like half the time not doing the best job because my head was in the clouds with my music. Your so music? I literally let this woman get on the plane one time <laughs> without her passport as her personal assistant. <laughs> and she was going <laughs> And I'm just up there like, oh, I can't wait till she can leave because I'm going to write this. And I'm gonna, you know, and I'm like, you know what? I need to focus on what I was born okay. to do. Purpose. And um, yeah, purpose. Yeah. So I was about to be a personal assistant for this guy. He, he had like a hair, a hair line that he mm -hmm. um, sold on QVC. I was yeah. going to be going with him. I would have been bi coastal. I would have made tons of money. And um, Raphael just said to me like, hey. Like, do you really, like, are you really going to do this? Like, right. you're probably not going to write no more if you do this. And um, I had to, I had to say no to the gig. Yeah. And I ended up, and I end up getting a job for like $12 an hour. Mm. And I, and like literally, and, and then I, but I focused every night on writing again, like, I, and I, and, and changing my focus. Like, I know that I want to write for film and TV. Mm. And that's the energy I put out there. That's the prayers I put out there. Yeah. Um, it's the work I put out there to find out like who who do I talk to and and just also just like God bring them to me. If you call it manifesting, you call it believing. I, I, my mantra is believe become, and I believe mm. whatever is in your mind of the what you harp on the most is going to become your reality. Yeah. Um. And so I, I I was like, okay, we're about to get a movie. We're about to get a movie. We can get a movie. And next thing you know, um, Raphael and I we did um. 
we did a Beyonce's animated debut, which was called Epic. Mm. And we wrote a song for um, the rock legend Steve um, Tyler mm. from Aerosmith. From Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> so we, wrote, uh, we wrote a song for him. And then wow. the next thing you know, the same company asked us to do um, uh, Black Nativity. Yeah. And so then we did Black Nativity. Oh my God! I cannot, you know, yeah, such, 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 I love that. I love so so many of the songs from that um, film. Yeah, y'all did y'all thing, y'all rock it, baby. That was <laughs> Thank amazing. you. Do you hear me? That was my show. I was obsessed with that show from the beginning, the way it started to the end of the show. Like the music y'all put on there was very inspiring. But not even it made me go and understand other artists. There's other artists I give a to mainstream, and that's what yeah. I had to tap into. You know? Yeah. Oh. Oh, thank Everything. you so much. And and Jennifer Hudson was singing down on there. And that part. <laughs> yes. And um Darren Darian Dorsey and I did a song for that, like it was a, a duet with Angela Bassett and, and um mm -hmm. and Jennifer Hudson. And Angela had never sung before. And I have to get like share just for people like who are acting and, and writing. And yeah. Um Angela said to me, like, I I was like, I didn't know you sing. And she was like, well, I didn't either. She said, but when they say, can you do it? You say yes. And yeah, you will worry about the how later. And when you, when you are, because you know, it's not like, can you fly a plane? Right. This is, you know, this is something that, you know, you, it's subjective. Like I'm yeah. going to be able to sing as good as I can, you know? And so that's what she did. And she did a great job um, in that. Um, after that, I, um, I was never, I never looked back. I said, you know what? This is what I'm doing. And I got real too, as um, with Jamie Foxx and Anne Hath Hathaway. Mm. Uh, I was a lyricist for that movie and had the, the, one of the best experiences, like singing all these kids all over the world mm. in different languages. The song opened, um, there's a song called Beautiful Creatures and mm -hmm. it opened um, the Olympics at the time and just mm. like, and and just seeing that and just like this is the feeling I've been looking for. This is mm -hmm. this is me 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 being able to sit in a room and write with Portuguese people and yeah. to, to tell a story from this perspective on, on one session, and then the black experience and mm -hmm. um, and uh, through the Jesus and nativity story uh, mm -hmm. in this perspective. Like this is, yeah. this is what I was born to do, and I, I haven't stopped since. And that's why the children we're gonna talk about today. <laughs> This is child children, what they call Destiny's Children Life for you. I love that you bring that because you're tying it back to it, it. Like I always say, connecting dots. So I got to shout out my friend, y'all. Connecting the dots when you're talking about your legacy. But for what you've done, you you reached out to all walks of life. And that's what I love about you, Ms. Sarah. Like, you're really making me understand that, you know, you wasn't just set to do one thing. You were set to do multiple things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think what your legacy, what you're telling me about is that, you know, you just didn't want to do just songwriting for certain things. You wanted to compose. You wanted to really have your stuff be known to people out there to watch movies, to hear and touch the heart. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, back to here with something talking about Destiny's Child, Destiny's Children, the 25th anniversary of their self titled the album that you have said, and I gotta give you this credit, ma'am. You actually the first to release a song by them. <clears throat> You're the first. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know we give No, No, No part two a lot of, um, it's made because it was the first thing off the album, but technically you gave them killing time. And that was really amazing because it was on a Man in Black, uh, Man in Black soundtrack that went triple platinum, four times platinum child. It probably more than what we know now. Yeah. But I didn't feel the process when you were with them. And then at the time, like this is when Dwayne and, you know, got involved and stuff like that. How did you get introduced to Destiny Child? Like the Houston Four, the four Houston girls, how did you get introduced to them? And now then, how did you get a part to do Killing Time and what inspired you? I think I know was it about your ex-boyfriend, about him smoking. How did that all came about? <laughs> um, he, uh, we ain't go, okay. So he, the my ex was one of the people that put the group together. Wow. Yeah. I know you're talking about. We yeah. Don't Wow. Yeah. And, and so he he put the group together and that's, you know, that's amazing. Like he, you know, mm -hmm. uh, gifts come without repentance is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Preach. <laughs> but um, um, so he 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 put the literally like saw them in an audition. Like I want to say it was like 12, 20 of them or something. And then you know, wow. getting them down and then having them have uh, like the, the singers and and then like Ashley and Beyonce and. Uh, Latavia Latoya, uh, Kelly, and I, um, some I forget the other names. There was like a you lot. Know, I know the girls, you talk yeah. about girls' time, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. And then they had dancers, and 
Um, so anyway, I came when I came when I first met them. They were babies, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say. Okay, so I had to be twenty three. Oh wow! Yeah. Mm -mm. So when I went there, I mean, I just like, <clears throat> like we we took on like each other like immediately. Um, uh, Matthew used to call me his third daughter, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we we like literally when I would go to Houston, like sometimes they would just like, uh, you know, fly me out there to write with them or to write with Solange, and um and I they had like this little apartment I would stay in Aww. and um, they had, you know, this beautiful home, like, like the black Cosby's. I just love their <laughs> family. Um, and, and how there was parallels because Tina and my mom were both hairstylists. Oh, so we spoke, yeah. The same language. Like I just, Tina, I just loved her, um, love her and Angie, uh, their cousin who was yeah. like, like me and Angie locked in and we were still friends to this day. Wow. And yeah. So when I met them, it was just, it was through him oh. and not necessarily um, for me to do anything creative. It was just like me being in Houston. He, mm -hmm. he lived out there um, and what well, he was back and forth and, and working out there. And then Matthew saw in me um, just like, Hey, you know, I want to get some songs from you as well. Mm -hmm. And it just never materialized from the stuff that I was writing with others right. that it didn't work out. But when I, when I got, I, when I got back home, I was always like friendly with the Wiggins with like Dwayne and Dwayne was like someone who really helped to, um, uh, help me to, to become a better songwriter. Oh, wow. Yeah. We lived across the park from each other. Oh yeah. Y'all were close then. Look. Yeah. <laughs> we were to each other. He had the only studio I knew, you know? Yeah. And so he would just like, I mean, and brutally like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not the way. Like, no, nah, you have to like, you know, just really like telling me how it was like, you're going to rhyme every word and, you know, just like helping me to um, yeah. to become better. And just like, here, you should listen to this person, listen to that person. So when I came back from Houston one time, I'm like, oh, my God, I saw these girls, this girl, Beyonce. She's like, amazing. Wait till you see them. And. He um, called me, I don't know, there is some stretch of time. He called me later and says, hey, remember the group you told me about? I'm like, yeah. He was like, I'm going to work with them. And I'm like, really? He was like, yeah, and we have to write a song together. It was just like that. What? And so the next time I saw them, it was like at um, a recording studio in Oakland wow. um, and or in Berkeley, actually. And and then, but I think at that time I had already written Killing Time with, with Dwayne. Mm. And it was it was for the, it was with them in mind. Like yeah. my backgrounds are still on that song. When you hear it to okay, the I feel, okay, that's why I had to go for that song. Like, I don't know the song. You can sing, honey. You can sing. I've heard your music. Sing, honey. I'm not really a singer, but thank Girl, you. You can sing. <laughs> you, you sing. But I was like, I knew I heard. You know, obviously, you know, four part harmony backgrounds. But I was like, I knew I'm you because one thing about a lot of my songwriters, a lot of y'all do demos. So I know y'all demo your own music, and I know for sure you could have, you should have been like you probably were. I was like. Somebody else is singing in this song, but I don't know who it is. So I'm going to make sure that she get her credit. Because I'm like, a lot of songwriters demo their songs to get their stuff played. So I know for sure you had to do your demos. So like, for them to keep it, that's dope. But I had a good feeling on the song. I said, okay. Nah. Yeah. But, you know, I think it was just an early process back then. Like, they didn't know, like, Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne didn't know that Beyonce can like color a whole record with <laughs> with her harmonies. And <laughs> like, I'm sure she could have done it then. Not to say that she needed me to. You know, I just did it. Um, he just he he probably did what was easiest for the song, like to keep it in there. And we're gonna turn yeah. it in, and um, I just will never forget Matthew calling me and uh, and him, him saying, "Hey, you know, your song is gonna be the, on the Men in Black soundtrack." And I'm just like, uh, and this is just a God thing, right? Because I've always wanted to be in in film, so I thought that was my start. And you just never know if you keep going. You just you'll finally get to where you where you um, where you see yourself, but you got to keep going right. to even get over that mountain. Because at that point, I'm like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in the film business. <laughs> Here I am. Right. And then it you know it took a long time for me to um, to actually get in the film business and to mm -hmm. to write songs for um, film and TV for movies yeah. and TV. But at that point, I thought that was it because I I just thought they were the greatest and and the the world caught on. But I thought they were the greatest thing the first, the moment I saw them. You thank know, the you. moment. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> just like what? Like what? They're so beautiful and just so talented. And the harmonies. When I would hear them sing, 
together, my mom and her sisters would sing harmony. And so I, I this is something, my, one of my cousins, I think she has the greatest voice under the sun. She's never come out with anything. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, I was her background singer. Oh. And so I know backgrounds. And so when I heard them, I was just like, okay, these girls have it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, And not only that, you just, they were good girls. Because yes. in East Oak, we had a lot of little fast little fast <laughs> girls. And so yeah, when you see like sitting around with Beyonce and Kelly and that they these are like really good little southern girls that are talented and just want to do well and just want to um sing. That's just what yeah. it was. And we're stylish and just like I just could not believe that they didn't have because I remember they had been dropped at that point. Yeah. And I couldn't fathom it. Mm -hmm. what wow. yep. like what was wrong you know but it just wasn't the time and when their yeah. time came it, yeah. it stopped <laughs> okay and, and, you know, and I love that you said when we were talking about Beyonce with that because she sung your song three times I saw her um sung your song on BET three times and like you said those runs she hits a lot of runs in your song so I was like mm -hmm. she has a lot I think a personal relationship with your song because for her to sing it with the girls and stuff like that she was just hitting like amazing. And you know, recently, um, the girls um so the time they did a recent interview with Essence about the 25th anniversary, and they gave your song a lot of love. Sensual songs they love from the album. And I was like, What? I was like, I gotta tell Tardy. And so I read the article today. And so much love on the song. I thought it was amazing because Killing Time is one of those beautiful sensual songs that kind of brings you back to those neo soul vibes that we were in at the time. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. 97, 98, when the girls are getting ready to do their start. I mean, you probably worked with them probably before. Yeah. But yeah at yeah. the time, mm -hmm. you know, we're in this neo soul era with D'Angelo, you know, Tony, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, Matt, everybody that's coming with the stuff. And so, you know, it was very interesting. Like you said, they were very young because for me, when I first seen them, you know, I was very young too. Like, you know, they look like teenagers, but the way they sung those songs, they sung with so much soul and so much, you know, essence and love on R and B. I can tell that they want they wanted to make a uh, make a break in the music industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, yeah. For you to give them that start. And not even that the album went, I mean, at that time, Benny Black went three times platinum. So girl, you literally gave them a triple platinum album before they album even came out. So Yeah, it was, it weren't like I don't know. I'm not gonna say I don't want to to misquote it, but it I have seen a, a plaque that had a lot of them and I wanted one. I haven't gotten it yet. Well, since we need to get your, get your stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to get one. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, those girls, um, I, um, that song was like on one of theirs, like maybe their love albums. It's been on a couple of compilations that have been released. Yeah, probably the recent love song album they had. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did. And I did a song for, um, for Kelly as well called Heaven. I don't know if you remember that song. Um, and that was also on the love. So I had like two songs on that, on their, uh, love song album. And I, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy. So I'm so blessed and thankful to be connected to their legacy because mm -hmm. I know um, I have to say something too, because mm -hmm. I get triggered when I see people talk about Beyonce um, being like, oh, she's an Illuminati and she's a, like, yeah. they say some really cruel things, something that was really Girl, cruel it's been on, <laughs> on um, Instagram the other day. I was like, wow, like, is, I said, judge not. Like, are you guys just like really saying this about this woman? This is, yeah, it was like a crazy. preacher. But I have prayed with that woman, you know, and I have, I've been to church with her and she is, and she, she loves the Lord. And I just, I hate to yeah. see that, that that's become a part of her mm -hmm. legacy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just felt led to say that. You better preach, girl, because yeah, that was, baby, let me tell you, when that caught me off guard, I said, oh no, ma'am. I was like, yeah. knowing that at the end of the day is, like I said, child, you don't know that woman. I don't know at the end of the day is yeah. behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, it's so crazy that you, it's not crazy, but it's amazing that you said that because I want her to, want all four of them to get the respect. Beyonce, Kelly, the toilet, the time, because yeah. everybody just thinks that, oh, it's Beyonce, Beyonce, but it was all four of them together. That it was all four of them. The whole. And I definitely want to give another person a shout out to, because we definitely talked about Matthew, but Andrea Tillman, the lady that really, oh, yeah. Heard that yeah. And, yeah, I knew and yeah, helped with Matthew and you know they really really geared those girls to where they become right now. You know what I'm saying? You know icons. Period. And for yeah. you to do this for them, like killing time, girl. When I was in town, I was like, oh, this gives me my feelings. Mm -hmm. like, my feelings, child. <laughs> I have to speak on Anne. Um, she yes, yeah, she was amazing. She um yeah. when so when I would go frequent Houston, it was because she wanted to manage me at that time. 
But everyone always wanted me to be like um, in front of the camera. And it was it was always a hard sell. And I ended, ended up doing it later, but I, it didn't work out because it's not what I wanted to do. But right. Anne, um, Anne was a huge part of their legacy and put mm -hmm. so much into um, like, you know, out of her own pocket to make the make sure that they rehearsed and they got um, records and clothes. And she wow. was amazing and loved them so much. Mm, rest in peace for her. Like, I mean, yeah. that's why, I, like I said, I just have to give everybody the groundwork mm -hmm. foundation of the group and how they got started. But I love that you really in so much detail about my girls because I didn't know a lot of stuff like you went to Houston with them. This is amazing to me. So you got to see, you from the South Island. You from Cali. Yeah. But mm -hmm. for with them at the start when they were babies and yeah, beautiful grown women is just it, it yeah. feels hard with joy that you really talked about that. You know, you know what I'm saying, Miss So thank you. Yeah. I want to ask you, how did you feel when they did become successful with No 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 Part Part One, Part Two, and then they got With Me Part Two, the side chick song that I love? I ain't gonna give no look. We start on this side, <laughs> but I love With Me. But you know, people don't think about because the vocals, you know, so Chris, you don't think about. It, but how did you feel when the album did go platinum? With number 14 on the charts, um, on the RB charts, and number 67 on the Billboard 200. But not even that, it's really a cult classic now. Now, I feel like it's their Neo mm -hmm. soul. They're more, I'm not appreciated more now because I feel like without this album, I wouldn't have Destiny fulfilled. And I had to sit back and think, I'm like, wait a minute, this album kind of really prepared me for what. Oh, well, yeah. Last one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As you, how was the, how did you feel when they did become successful? Like, how did you feel when you got that start and they album did go platinum? I was just happy for them. I would just see them. And, and, and at that time, I yeah. was like always in contact, you know, so when they have a concert, like I would go and I remember meeting Michelle for the first time and just kind of like, man, like, you know, seeing her and um, and like saying, oh, my God, I know exactly. She's a church girl. And Beyonce was like, exactly. You know, like <laughs> um, and um, and when when like when the girls, when when Latavia and Latoya, like I was living in Atlanta yeah. when they when they uh, when, whatever happened with them in the group. They came to my house, you know, what? Came to my house and we, oh, we sat there and consoled them and oh. and just like, you know, it, it was a big joke because my dog, my dog was like very expressive and emotional. And he was like rubbing uh, Latoya's hand and she was like crying and she was like, hold on. Why is your dog rubbing my hand? <laughs> he was like, oh, oh, God, 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 you going to make me cry. <laughs> But yeah, um, but they, you know, even like I would hate when that happened, when they disbanded and to see the divide when I know how much they loved each other. Beyonce and Latavia were best friends. And um, Tar, you about to make me cry, girl. I don't know. Girl, I don't know these stories, girl, because it just makes me sad about how the beginning happened and where they were now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but it, I mean, I, I just, when I, but to answer your question, when it, when they became successful, I, I mean, and even to this day, like whatever any one of them do, when I saw, when I saw Latoya, Lat Latoya on like um, uh, one of the shows, 50 Cent shows recently. Oh, I'm yeah. Talking about, about, yeah. Talking about, yeah. I'm like, yes, you know, and I just, um, I'm just so happy for all of them. I'm so happy for Beyonce and, and, and everything that she has, she deserves, you know? And, um, and when I saw them become successful, I just, I was just watching like with, with tears in my eyes and a smile on my face and just happy for them and happy, not just for them, but happy for Matthew and Tina. Yeah. And they put so much into it. And I mean, I, I remember being in Houston, running errands with with Tina, get her getting all her these going to get this clothes together and getting belts and sewing things together, and like that is hard work. And she, mm. and that not to even mention the hair, like and all the stuff that she did early, up. and then being their mother, you know. Yes. And um, I just I was just so happy and remained so happy for the entire family. Girl, I literally was shedding tears. I had to really hold my tears back because I'm like, I cannot cry because these girls are the worst. But <laughs> What you talking about? I love to hear the hard work and dedication because people just sit up there and think they just got it. No, they really work their tail off. And they I heard work hard. That they were dedicated. And oh, yeah. seeing that you were there behind the scenes and seeing all the hard work, you know, they did with Dwayne. I seen the video of Dwayne. Um, he did back in the day. I wish he put the video out predestined with Destiny Child, how they first got started. Like they were in the house, they were like, they really loved each other. Like they still love each other, but at that time. Yeah. Deep, deep love for each other. Deep love for each other. And yeah. it was just amazing to see my girls really blossom the way they did. And I think for you to give them that start, because I, I feel like you're the pioneer for them to open the door for having Killing Time. Like, that is a beautiful, beautiful record. I had to sit back and think, because you know, I was super young back then. I didn't understand. But when I got down when I was six, I'm like, okay, 
And then I sit yeah. back as an adult. It gave me that neo soul vibe. It gave me the soul mm -hmm. of you know of Al Green, the homage they did to that with the instrumentations, what the oh, yeah. was trying to do for those girls. I was like, okay. At first, I was kind of confused, but I'm as an adult now. I'm like, I see what he was trying to do. He was trying to make sure they kept the soul of R and B. Oh yeah, and because that's what that was all about to me. Right? Yeah, they were so soulful, and you couldn't deny that. And so you lean into that. Mm -hmm. um, as, especially with Dwayne being, you know, who he is. He's from Tony, Tony, Tony. They had a okay. hit song. They had like, you know, uh, feels good and everything. But when you listen to the records, that's not what you're getting. You know, right. they, they are a band that is seriously soul. So, uh, you know, soulful and and just like amazing producers and musicians. And so I think he leaned into that as as, you know, to, to because that's what he knew to do. Right. And I'm so happy that he did. Um, because I, I think it became the foundation for where they where they went. Because if someone would have just given them like a pop beat, it could have you know it could have just destroyed them. Right. And, and then when Wyclef came in and he had um, the remix to No 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 No, he did the exact the, the right thing, you know. But again, Dwayne laid that foundation. There you go. Because mm -hmm. I feel like Dwayne, he needs to get his strikes for that. Because for him. Mm -hmm. To bring my girls and give them that, you know, production deal and stuff like that and just starting them and prepare them for what they were coming with. But like you said, they were already poised. And Matthew knows is a businessman, so I know about him, you know, where he came from and his start in Houston. It was like, they were prepared for this. And I'm starting yep. to realize that now, even though at the tender young age of 15 and 16, they were prepared to see what they were going to get in the music industry. But not even that, I think they were prepared for, like, hey, we have to have a unit, but not even that, we have to make a name for ourselves. Because Destiny Child, like, is a huge brand now that we know. But back then... The beginning of what it was and the dedication. I just love that you were part of that. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You know what I'm saying? So don't make me cry because girl, you the time I was literally about to be in his hair. I'm like, I can't cry. Don't cry. That's just because you're you're such a big fan. And I yeah. and, and, and there's people like you that keep have kept them going and it's just it's beautiful to see. Yeah, and thank you so much. So since mm -hmm. you came all your heads, honey, because you didn't name all your heads. I knew you showed me the way and all that. I was like, what's your name? <laughs> But I wanted to ask you, because I asked all my guests that come on my show, what is the key of making a hit record? Since you are an amazing songwriter and everything you do. But not even that, what is your favorite hit from your catalog? Oh, um, <laughs> it's, it's so it's subjective. I mean, it's it's like, yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't know. I mean, like, Gangsling is not my favorite, but it's like one of the most successful, you know. <laughs> so, but um, I will say, like, yeah. there's songs that didn't really... I don't know because sometimes film music doesn't chart, but you you know is right. measured is, is measured in different ways. Oh. Um, so um, like I won a Critics Choice Award for the song um, Jump. It was best song in a documentary. It was wow. recorded by this late by Cynthia Arrivo. Mm. And um, oh, and so the, my my sorority just, yes. Oh, it's she. Yeah, and she. But that song is like is one. Sometimes I listen to it for myself, mm -hmm. just to like to remember who I am. And it's about um, taking like who you who you're born to be is born in the leap. Like mm -hmm. you you're not you're not gonna you know know how it is to jump just standing on on the sideline. You're gonna have to jump, and it's like when you're in the air. That's when you kind of figure out before you hit the other side. You might figure out where you know what you're there where you're heading. And so that was one of my favorites. Um, I love. I'm like really big on 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 words that inspire. Mm -hmm. So um, that one, and then. Obviously, I was nominated for an Oscar for Mighty River. Yeah, I want you to know. <laughs> I want you to know you work with Mary, you and Raphael. Girl, that pro I bet that process was just amazing. Y'all were just in mm -hmm. y'all bag. Like, how did it feel when you, like, how was that? And then I, how did you feel when you got the call from that? Like, it was, I mean, because I had already worked with Mary on um, Black Nativity. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and uh, Raphael and I were, were I want to say he called me and just said, hey, you know, we're going to write a song for, this Mary J. Blige movie. And when she came over, we had um, gone in the wrong direction, to be honest. Like, we what? Had, yeah, we, we, we were thinking, like, we were just so excited to work with Mary. You're going to be like, boom, like a, a rah, rah, Mary. <laughs> and she was like, I remember being in a booth and she came into the studio and I just saw her going like, no. I was like, oh, no. What is she saying no for? And I came out and she's just like, no, like, you know, no, 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 no. This is an emotional you know, like, and so then we had to, and you know, not, and sometimes you just don't pay attention to the script or you just don't, yeah. um, and you're just so excited and, and driven by who you're working with. And so it was kind of like, okay, well, we have to turn this around in the next 48 hours. 
Right. And so, so sometimes you don't see the beauty into it in it until it's behind you. <laughs> that was one of those situations where you're just like, you know, um, this movie was very heavy. Yeah. Um, what's the opposite of this mud? Well, we need to wash it clean in this river. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, that may Girl, that's why he's a genius. You are. I talk about my friend Jr. He's a huge Mary J. Blige. He loves that woman. He not you He talking about this song like so. He loves Mighty River. He oh, like he watched the movie. He said it was very problematic. So Jr., you get your shout out, honey, because he hey Jr. Her. Okay, look, get Mary J. Blige. But yeah, Jr., it makes so much sense why the way you write the way you write because mm -hmm. what I'm learning from you, you take personal situations and make it into a story. Oh yeah. So that's whatever. What you've dealt with or any story that you've seen in personal people's lives, I respect it about you. And that's why I have to give you so much, so many flowers because I didn't think that the songs that you make, not even just on no, no stuff, it's just the songs that people will be touched by. Like I, at the time when Destiny Child came out with them, I was nine. Mm. I didn't think I was going to be touched by Destiny's Child until I got older. But when I understood yeah. the lyrics and just understood about power of music, it can touch you at any age and it doesn't matter what age. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sis, I'm done with you. Sorry, I'm done, girl. <laughs> what was your favorite hit? What was your favorite hit from the catalog? What's your like you wrote? Um, I, I think it's jump. I, I think it's I think it's jump. Um, jump, okay. Um, I, I I love I love glow. Twenty years, honey. You guys, <laughs> it's gonna be twenty years. Look. I love. I, I'm from because I think I think it's the East Oakland in me. I love a song that slaps. So I like when you put it, when you put glow in your car, it's just like come on. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I really it's almost like I don't have children, so like music are my kids, and um, so it's hard to name a favorite. But I love um, Good Man. Like me and Raphael did um, Good Man is uh, one of my favorites too. It mm -hmm. was it was like I did not know I was gonna be doing that. Like I, I said, Ray, I think that Fifty Cent should sing this part. And it's gonna, be, I'm like, Good Man, food on the table, working two jobs, ready. Yeah. And I'm like, This is gonna be Fifty Cent part. <laughs> and so when he came, when he when I heard hearing the song, I'm like, Why is my voice still on it? And he goes, Um, I said, Who gonna be the rapper? He said, You the rapper. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Bobby, I'm yeah. gonna do that 360 on you real quick. Yes, but I love that. I love that song. Um, and just on, I mean, there is, um, there is a, the song "Beautiful Creatures." I just loved it. It was from from Rio too, and it's just like you have to hear it. It's like it's like a I'm really good me. cartoon song. And then all you know, the, all the stuff we're doing with Moon Girl. The, I, I really don't have. A, I know this sounds crazy as heck, but I don't really have. Like th those songs, I really love, and I have a, a independent project that came out. Well, yeah, um, you know, freedom is making five years on March second, honey. So you gotta congratulate. That's crazy, yeah. girl. You know I keep up with dates and numbers, honey. So yeah, I, I was like, this is a very, very beautiful record. I was like, and then you were independent. That was from um, five that years. was from the underground mm -hmm. TV show, the underground. But there, there was another. I was in this like I did this duo with my friend Chrissy called yeah. Art Piece. Okay. And, and and we had like these incredible songs, but it was like at the beginning of streaming. And so we didn't really know how to put it out, but we put it out, but at least are beautiful songs. So I just like, it's almost like it's hard for me to, it depends on the day. Yeah. We need your, we need your songs. Obviously look, you broke for people, but you got a voice in yourself and that's the blessing I learned about you and your legacy. You know what I'm saying, Miss Hara? So you just, Thank you. you just gotta look, look, sis, I support you 100% and everything you've done in this music industry, your story needs to be told and your voice, you have a voice. You know what Thank I'm saying? Thank you so much. About you. So I want to ask you, what's your favorite thing that you like doing though? Do you like songwriting, singing, composing, or being an author? Ooh, whoo. Um, I love songwriting. I think I, I yeah, you know I love songwriting. Um, your uh, your author for your book because of what you inspired because I, I I seen a lot of commercials on it and you touched me with your story because I was like, oh Lord, I ain't want to cry, but I was <laughs> like, but songwriting I can tell because of your personal story, whatever story that you have told is in those. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Not and when you asked the question earlier, like what what do I think is um the key to writing a hit? Mm -hmm. Um, and it it de it depends because you know. Hits or some people, there's hits like people have Rihanna, like these big, huge songs like Esther Dean. And yeah. those songs are may come from a different place of just like less, you know, we want to, we're writing for the people. Yeah. Um, I come from a place where I write songs is more mostly cathartic for me. That's healing for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, and so I think then it gets, it reaches people in a different place. Um, um, and the same with, you know, with other people who, uh, who write in that way, like Joni Mitchell or like, um, Joni Mitchell, that was last. India Ari, or even, or even like, like some of the, like, uh, the song Girl um, by Your Girls um, by Destiny's Child. I just, yeah. like, songs like that, songs that just like tap into a different place in you. Mm, free, oh my God. Mm. Like Me, Myself, and I. Let me girl, tell you. That's my song. Girl, <laughs> that is my song. Let me tell you, there's something, whoever, I know Scott Storch and maybe me, I'm not sure who else who else wrote that song, mm -hmm. but that song carried me into in a play, in a play from one place to the next at one time in my life, you know? Yeah. And so I love music like that. And so if I can, if I am the vehicle sometimes to, to, to drive that out to people, that's beautiful. But I'm also I love to be a passenger. Just I just love music, Free but, time. but I love writing. I just love writing words, period. Yes. Cause baby, you always preach the word with that pen, honey. You, you, <laughs> or, or you and Robbie all sitting together, whatever y'all do is just magic. And I think that's why it inspires so many people, especially with, you know, being in TV, I just was like, wow, you know, the stuff that y'all been doing Insecure, honey, it was making me cry. I was like, let me mm -hmm. That was him. That was him. That was oh. him. I, I, did, I did a, like some, I did a rap, some raps for Issa on um, Insecure. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't know like, Rafael was raps. composing that. Oh, man. Like, mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Miss Star, so much. So I got another question to ask you. So if you today, since today is the 25th anniversary of my girls, DC, the legacy that you have created for yourself for these girls. If you describe one word about this beautiful time in this album today, what one word would it be? Timeless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Timeless, wow. Timeless. It's like, I mean, we're here talking about it 25 years later. Wow. You know, it's and it's still, you can still listen to it. Like, not, not just killing time. I remember um, my favorite song on that record used to be... Um, uh, second nature. I love second nature. <laughs> so, when the first one, the track one, boom! It, it, yeah, it, it hits. Boom, boom, doo, doo, doo. Mm, I love that song. Um, yes. And uh, there, I mean, well, no, no, no. I love you know. It's just like timeless songs. People are gonna remake those songs. People are gonna know these songs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so grateful that you know they're still talking about killing time and that it's a part of their legacy and that. Yeah. Um, it you know that they're even still talking about it when when I when seeing them perform that um and their concert I think it was like a TRL tour yeah and I was just like in the audience just like oh my god and they're like and Tara's here and I'm <laughs> like oh it was like a beautiful memory yeah. you know um, oh, I what well, I agree with you is definitely Thomas because it changed my life because I became a super fan but not even that I feel like this is their most soulful album. Mm -hmm. album because I feel and I had to start to think about it too and I was thinking today I was like wow if I did not have this album I don't know if I would have had Destiny Fulfilled because mm -hmm. I seen mm -hmm. it in a way that you know they couldn't tap into R&B but my thing about this was the foundation of R&B for them and I'm right. proud of Wayne and you and everybody was acquired you know Tim and Bob and everybody mm -hmm. who was a part of this project you really gave the girls and even though if they were like very young I think they didn't understand what they were doing they were setting a landmark for R&B and right. they, I was really proud about because at first, you know, everybody gets so caught up in the writings on the wall. Yes, it was the biggest, you know, records popping stuff like that. But I feel like, and I've always said this on my platform, you have to tap into your R&B roots. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. right. That they were doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the the roots of your R&B, not even that tapping in the gospel, you know, the dedication to Miss Andrea Tillman. I feel like the, with these records, I because I, I'm a person that loves ballads. I'm a ballad girl. I'm a sex with ballads. But I, mm -hmm. I like me too with four point harmonies and for me look everybody's like don't cry i'm not crying y'all i'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> but what you did with these girls you really changed their lives for the better and, and because of this beyonce is the most grammy awarded person in grammy history you wow. have or you, you gave that to them and i have to give you your flowers for that i don't know if i gave it to them but i'm, oh, I'm happy to be killing time is they first like look i always yeah. love the beginning the blueprint and i feel like with this album, this body of work that you did for these girls, I'm proud that they stayed in R&B and they always kept it R&B. Yep, you know, they, they sure did. The pop records. They were R&B records because they sang mm -hmm. vocals in church and gospel roots. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But I love this album and I now really realize now at the age I am, I'm 33 now because I was eight when this album dropped. But mm -hmm. I being the woman that I am today, I can really appreciate it for what it is and the loving, you know, songs that you did for this album. 
And I never for you, the way that everybody that was a part of this project gives me so much life into making sure that R&B is going to be forever here. Yes. You have to interview Dwayne. He, I'm sure he would love to talk to him. I mean, uh, he would. Uh, Dwayne would make me cry, but Latar, you would make me cry because I'm like, <laughs> this is my girls, because people don't give, not saying they don't give the first album a lot of respect, but you have to start from the beginning. And I'm sorry, mm -hmm. without, as a child, first debut album, we wouldn't have. Uh, writings on the wall or survival right. or death. I mean, it's growth. It's growth. It's a growth for everyone. It's like yeah. it's growth for um their process and, and, the, and becoming artists and like becoming women. There yeah. were things that they couldn't even talk about then. So okay. preach, because baby, yeah. let me tell you, when I go when I go to that last one, free and if and t shirt and autumn records, it's mm -hmm. the first. So yep. when I mm -hmm. make that, I go back and look. I'm like, I, I get it now. They were trying to close the chapter to what it was. You know what I'm saying? And I was super proud of that. And Mr. I have to give you your respect. So my last question to you, I want to ask you, did you have any advice for any people, uh, any people that want to get into this music industry? And not even that. I want to ask you, what does Tar sense and mean in R&B? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I really don't know. That's kind of like a a question for for, for listeners to our, of R and B, you know, right. for me personally, it's hard. It's hard to you know separate myself. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I'm just I'm I'm happy to be a part of the conversation. I'm happy to be. I do know that um, to be able to say I work with Destiny's Child and Deborah Cox mm -hmm. and Earth Wind and Fire and Khalees, like these are people that are um, well, Earth Wind and Fire. They're like the forefathers of of soul and R and B. You know, so to be able to for for, um, for Maurice White to tell me that I got it, I don't really care what anybody else has to that, say. <laughs> okay, oh, I mean, girl. Okay. So um, yeah, I um, I'm, and and to be able to to be at, at this at the point in, in, in Beyonce and Kelly and Latavia Latoya's career, and uh, and even Michelle to be able to to have this to be a, a, a fiber in the fabric of their foundation is just. Is 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 just empowering for me personally. Mm, mm, mm. And, oh, and see, we can end it right there because for me, <laughs> what this album means to me in my heart and what I've learned from the girls is that you know they, they will always be R&B. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. for what Destiny Child, the subtitle debut album for the four girls that started from the beginning, look Beyonce, Kelly, Latoya, Latavia. That that goes to show you, you know, they inspired a lot of other R and B groups after them. Like, oh my God, yeah. Like the, you know, you know what I'm saying. Everybody, the flow, the new flow, Millie, um, the flow girls. You know what I'm saying. Like all these girl groups that's coming right after them are really, really open the doors to, you know, learn from their legacy. But not even learn how. To, at the end of the day, is it's always great to keep R and B music and stay R and B. And that's what I love about this album. And you know, Killing Time. You know, that's my jam. But not even that. I can see now for what you were doing with the song, and not even that, I'm happy that you did it and created a legacy for them. And I thank you so much. Oh, Miss Dog, <laughs> you don't make me cry. You're going to make me cry. Like, I cannot cry. Don't cry. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Like, not even just that. I just love that. Not even that you went in so many different lanes with your career. Not even that you really, really have set the, set the test of time in 30 years. Man, my body. you. <laughs> That's crazy. 30 years. Thank you. And I'm just getting started. Okay, it says, look, we want another Oscar nominated song. Yes, a, a win, a win, a win. Yes, sis. Yeah. Yes. So, any one more thing, do you have any up upcoming projects or anything that you have coming up before we do it today? Um, Moon Girl, the Devil Dinosaur is on um, streaming now on Disney Plus. Okay, it's on okay. Disney Channel. Um, and I did the, I did. And the soundtrack is, is out. I did the theme song as well as like a few songs in the, the actual uh, cartoon. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a movie, Carmen, coming out and <laughs> next month. Comes out next month. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm going to a screening of it like in the next two weeks. So it comes out, I believe, in April. And oh. it is a um, Benjamin, B Benjamin Millipied's uh, uh, directorial debut. Okay. He is a ballet dancer who um, did Black Swan, Natalie oh. Portman's husband. Um, and so Nicholas Bertel, he's an amazing composer and friend. He and I co-wrote a song um, for that for that movie mm -hmm. um, and uh, that the main character sings. And so that comes out. And then I have uh, 
later this year, I have another movie coming out, but it's an NDA, so you have to. Oh, what <laughs> well, look, look, don't tell us, but when you drop it, baby, I'm ready to promote it because I, I, I love to see my army legends really, really keep that legacy going. And I'm super, super proud of you. And not even that, thank your you. flowers are on my platform. Oh, congratulations you. on a 30 year amazing career, but not even that, congratulations on your legacy and everything that you're doing. I'm thank sorry. you so I, much. Thank I, you for having me. Yes, girl. You, I, girl, you didn't look, you literally <laughs> almost like, girl, I was literally about to have tears shedding down my eyes because oh. stories you have told about my girls, but I know your legacy means so much to me because of black women. I love to see my black women win. Likewise. That's all. That's what it's oh. all about. Yeah. I, your your book is everything well deserved. When I'm oh, you. thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So, guys, we are done with my beautiful interview with the Oscar-nominated author, singer, songwriter, composer. Baby, I'm going to drop everything. I'm going to drop all of you. Thank the you. one and only Miss Tara Stinson. God bless you. And God bless you. you. The bottom of my heart. Thank you Thank so you. Much. Have a good one. <laughs> you be blessed. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't know how to get out.